Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you here present as well as those following through live stream. We ask you now to please take a few moments to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch and our gathering hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship number 475, God whose glory reigns eternal. Please stand. God whose glory reigns eternal, spanning space as well as time. Show us signs in seed and kernel, life potential, hope sublime. Grant us insight, all discerning, seeing truth beyond the fact. Love translating all our learning into power to be and Christ sealing, touch and teaching, we see life as you intend. Selfless love to others reaching, pain and brokenness to end. And when hungry folk are nourished, filled by hope and word and bread, these are signs your reign. And from bondage we are led. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Morning. Morning. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the God's right of God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of James. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be evidence against you and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure for the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud, cry out. 
and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. The word of the Lord. The response for Psalm 34 is, The poor one called, and the Lord heard. The poor one called, and the Lord heard. The I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. The poor one calls. The face of the Lord is against evil doers, to cut off remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord one called and the The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The poor one called and the from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will be no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, or it is better for you to enter life may, lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out, for it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire, and every sacrifice will be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, who can restore it? Have salt in yourselves, 
and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading today, James has in his sights the wealthy landed class who gained their wealth by exploiting the poor and making money off their hard labor, those poor who worked on their land. They cheated them and they were deaf to the cries of their exploited laborers. But James reminds them that the Lord wasn't deaf to their cries. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts, he says. The Lord who wasn't blind to the heartless injustice of the landowners, they will face the Lord's just sentence. The kind of heartless human behavior that James exposes in the, is the opposite of the kind of behavior Jesus refers to at the beginning of the Gospel reading. Whoever gives, a cup, gives you a cup of cold water to drink because you bear the name of Jesus Christ will be no means, by no means lose the reward. The giving of a cup of cold water seems simple. But to someone, who, to someone who needs it, it's a very small act of kindness, but it can be a very precious gift to someone who's thirsty on a hot day. So Jesus is reminding us that the smallest gesture of kindness towards someone has enormous value in the sight of God. So we have just finished the Feast of Pentecost last Sunday, and St. Paul speaks of generosity and kindness as the fruit of the Spirit. The smallest of kind and generous gestures can reveal the fullness of the Spirit of God's love. In the remainder of the Gospel reading, Jesus says that we can become an obstacle to one another, so that on our journey we become an obstacle. We can lead others away from the Lord or prevent them from coming to the Lord by our maybe unwelcoming spirit in our church or by bad example. Now, of course, he uses exaggerated language, and of you or I cause you to sin, tear it out, you know? But that's very exaggerated lang language, typical of Jewish language. Obviously not to be taken literally, I hope, suggesting that if our lives are to be shaped by the Holy Spirit, we need to keep in check all those forces w within us that pull us away from the way of Jesus, that pull us in the opposite direction to the Holy Spirit work in our lives. The positive calling of the Gospel reading today is that every aspect of our embodied existence is to serve and nurture our relationship with the Lord Jesus. Our calling is to give our whole selves, body, mind, and spirit to the Lord and to his way, to gather up all the elements that go to make us up and point them in the one direction, the direction of the Lord Jesus and his will for our lives. In this inner struggle, the Holy Spirit will always be stronger, and if we surrender to it, we will be empowered to live in ways that correspond to the Lord's will for our lives. Our prayers of intercession today. We pray today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis and Peter, our Archbishop, and for all those who shepherd our people in the world, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in our world, especially in Israel and Gaza, in Haiti, in Ukraine, Sudan, Myanmar, and other areas of conflict in our world, we pray to the Lord. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit and all the sick recommended to our prayers, Christopher Anthony, Sister Roisin Gannon, Father John Aaron, Chelsea Coombs, Yvonne Steiner, Anne Lilly, Max Collett, Ellen St. Croix, Ralph Critch, Joseph Dobbin. For these and all those who have requested our prayers during our daily Masses, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for your intention today, and we also pray today for our deceased, for Josephine Walsh, Father John Hanton and deceased family members, and Father Pat Power and his deceased family members. For all of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquity and cleanse us of our sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered in the, to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy through your beloved Son Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and after willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptized children of God in the family of Jesus, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share the peace of the risen Jesus with one another. With you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only but say the word, say the and, word my and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> The communion hymn can be found in the Celebrating Song hymnal, number 6.4, Let Us Be Bread. be bread blessed by the Lord broken and shared life for the world let us be wine love freely poured let us be one in the by the Lord, broken and shared life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us 
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 480 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Amazing Grace. Let's pray. 